This is a Midwest rake spike roller. The spikes are 13 sixteenths of an inch long, almost an inch long. You want really long spikes when you're doing at least a quarter inch or thicker because if the spikes are too short, if they were only half this length, this product is too thick and heavy and it would start to overwhelm the spikes and then you would just make a sludgy mess. So you need really, really long spikes so they can roll through it. What we're doing now is we're going to aerate it out, help to release any air that may be in this, causing the, the coating to compact down and sink down even lower so that it gets very, very dense, giving it an extremely high PSI. So the spike roller guy is simply going to come along. He doesn't even need to pick up and put down. He just kind of overlaps and just keeps going steadily across. The spike roller guy will be following the gauge raking guy a few kits behind. And they will continue this process until the floor is done. Once you start polymer concrete, there is no stopping until the entire floor is done. After this has been gauge raking and spike rolled, you can see how flat and glassy and leveled this gets. It's a very, very easy product to put down. The only catch is it's fairly laborious. So depending on how many square feet you have is gonna, gonna dictate how many guys you're gonna need and how long they're gonna have to work to finish the floor. Once this is done, you're kind of at a, you're kind of at a finish point right now depending on what they need this floor for. At this point, I can broadcast sand into here, silica sand, 20 grit, 30 grit, or quartz, um, for added impact resistance and slip resistance if it's needed. If it's not needed, where employees aren't going to be, then some guys might leave it exactly like this. Now at this point, this is good for chemical spills. This is good for around production machinery that leak oil or hydraulic fluid. This is good for food facilities where animal fat might be spilled. Anything that lands on polymer concrete cannot get through it. It can't get to the concrete, it can't get to the soil. It will dead stop whatever lands on it so that it can't go anywhere else. So at this point, depending on what we're using this floor for, we're done. We can come back the next day and leave it just as it is, and then it's return to service, foot traffic, generally within 24 hours. Forklift and or vehicle traffic, generally 48 hours, depending on the temperature. Temperature will affect this. It's just like a epoxy. The colder it is, the slower it'll cure, the hotter, the faster it'll cure. So always keep temperature in mind. You always wanna keep your product at a cool temperature, not cold, but cool. Make sure it's manageable for you. Don't ever let this get hot or try to do it in a 110 degree day in a warehouse with no air conditioning. You'll be in a world of hurt. 